Hey you, I'm Sarah Turner and today we're going to talk about structuring cold emails because it really matters. When people tell me that cold emailing doesn't work, it is really because they're doing it wrong. You cannot send off a bunch of mass cold emails to a bunch of people that look like a copy and pasted template and expect to get results. But the great thing about cold emailing is that when you do it right, you get to choose who you work with. It's why I'm such a believer in it. You're not stuck on job boards. You're not stuck going from feast to famine. You have a resource, a tool that you can use anytime you want to ramp up your client work. And it's effective. It works. It has. It is how I have built my business. And eventually you don't have to cold email, you know? You're going to start getting referrals and, you know, word of mouth and things like that will will help you with your incoming clients. But to get started, you don't want to be stuck in things like Upwork and things like that. So I really believe in cold emailing. It has worked for me. It has worked for hundreds of my students. So today we're going to look at some elements of an effective cold email. We're going to look at a cold email template and um, one that I use that got me some of the biggest clients that I still work with today. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, so let's talk about the elements and structuring of a good cold email. So first, few th there are a few things to keep in mind when cold emailing. One, it is a great way to showcase your writing skills. It's one of the reasons I love it. It's also great because you get to reach out to people you actually want to work with. Um, and a lot of times the clients I've cold emailed, they're not looking for a copywriter at the time. So you get to reach people who aren't necessarily aware of the fact that a copywriter is a good fit for their business. So it's another benefit. But things you want to make sure you're doing when cold emailing is addressing their pain points. Okay, so keeping in mind, like, what are the things that are making their business more difficult? How can you help them? You want to offer value right away. One way you can do that is by making some suggestions that would be beneficial to them. Maybe you notice that they aren't using SEO on their website or they don't have a blog or they're not collecting emails on their website for um, building an email list. So those are some of the things you can do to offer value right away. And that's another, that's the other thing you're doing when you do that is you're demonstrating your marketing knowledge in a tactful way instead of saying, hey, I, I know what I'm doing, right? So also when you're cold emailing, you want to make sure you're finding your ideal clients. And some great places to do that are Facebook groups, um, you know, Groupon, SimilarWeb is a way to find websites that um, are similar to, you know, one ideal client you've maybe identified. And then conferences and events, seeing where your ideal clients are actually attending events and who the other people are. Um, that are attending, you know, that's a great way to come up with a list of ideal clients. Another thing that you can do is you can look at their Instagram and see who they're following. And also when you start to click on certain things or ads and sponsored posts that pop up in Facebook and Instagram, they'll show you more. So that's another way you can find some ideal clients. <clears throat> then you can use the hunter.io plugin for Chrome or LinkedIn sales navigator to find emails. You can also find emails sometimes on people's Instagram pages. Um, so that's another really helpful place. Another thing to keep in mind is the reticular activating system, which is a bundle of nerves that helps filter out unnecessary information so the important stuff gets noticed. It's the thing that when you buy a new car, suddenly you see your new car everywhere. Um, so the way you tap into this is by mentioning something you know that is important or relevant to them. For example, if you found them at an event, like a list of speakers at an event, for example, maybe mention that event in some way because it's gonna be, it's gonna capture their attention and be much more likely that they'll open your cold email and that they will pay attention. So another thing to keep in mind is reciprocity. So if you add something, like if you give them a gift, like a giveaway, like something that they could use on like a social media post, a quiz. Um, sometimes another thing, this is called an opt-in or something that somebody might have on their website to collect emails, like something you'll get in exchange for an email. Recipe books are another popular one. Um, they are going to be, if you give them that gift, they're going to be more compelled to engage with you and give you a response because we all have this thing in us. Uh, again, it's called reciprocity where it's like, if you do something for me, I'm going to be much more likely to do something for you. So keep that in mind when you're writing your cold email. 
The other thing that you want to make sure you include is personalization. Show that you've actually looked into them. You know, give them authentic compliments and genuine advice. Reference uh, their expertise in their industry and things like that. Um, Establish credibility. Lead with your personal introduction and demonstrate your value. Offer your knowledge. Um, Talk about how what why what you do is important for them, but make sure that the focus is always on them over you. So don't make it sound like a resume. Really focus on what you can do for them. Um, Every sentence you write in that cold email, even when you're writing about yourself and your credentials, can be restructured so that they are the center and they are the focus. So make sure you do that as well. And just keep in mind that you always want to be delivering value, explaining how you're going to help them, And you want to do that without sounding arrogant. Um, Go above and beyond. Always over deliver. This is one of the reasons I recommend, you know, kind of offering something that might be useful to their business, whether it's a recipe book or a quiz or a social media post. Anything extra you can come up with that would be helpful for them is going to go a long way. And then go ahead and provide a sample of your work that is relevant um, in the form of a link. Don't send any attachments that's also really going to help them uh, know if they want to work with you more quickly because sometimes people are busy and they don't necessarily want to hop on a call with you. But if they, you know, I always say something like, in order to save you time, because I'm sure you're busy, I went ahead and included a, a, you know, an article I think that would be really relevant to your audience. And then make sure you have a clear CTA, you're a copywriter. Um, so a call to action, make sure you, they know exactly what you want them to do. Do you want them to set up a Calendly meeting? Do you want them to email you back? Do you want them to give you a call? Tell them what the next steps are and also give them kind of a time frame and let them know that you'll follow up. So now I'm going to show you a cold email that worked really, really well for me. I want to give you a heads up though. Don't copy and paste this email because people can tell when one, it's not your, um, tone and voice. But two, I have hundreds of students in my course, and if you end up using this, you know, there's a good chance they've already seen it before. So definitely write your own. Um, So you do not want to copy this cold email template because if you get caught as a writer, that is really, really bad. So don't just copy this template because there's a good chance they could have seen it and it would not be good for you. It would do exactly the opposite of what you're trying to do here, which is establish and build trust with a new client. So, okay. Hey, Dr. David, I hope you're doing well. As a leader in XYZ industry, say your niche, you understand the importance of excellent and engaging content, but it can be hard to find consistent, high quality writers who specialize in the complicated and ever changing world of industry. I noticed your blog was last updated in January. As I'm sure you know, blogs add value to your consumers' lives, establish authority. They can also be shared across all social media platforms. Content creation is easily the best use of your marketing efforts, which is why they say content is king in the marketing world. Creating great shareable content is time consuming and I'm sure you're busy, so I thought I'd reach out and make an introduction. I'm Sarah Turner, a professional medical and health, get specific about your copywriting niche, copywriter, who specializes in inbound marketing for doctors and wellness leaders and then name your ideal client's position with an integrative approach and explain what they do. So really take the time to personalize this. So this is the, per- and it's the personalization I was talking about. And then, so name some previous clients that's establishing credibility um, and then why they matter and how they relate to the person you're emailing. Um, and when I was started, these clients, I wasn't even paid to write for. I just would name a few, even if it's like your uncle's business. Um, and then I say what they're going to get when they work with me. And again, focus on them. So when you work with me, you're going to get high quality writing that's based on the latest scientific marketing, SEO, consumer research, because I keep a finger on the pulse of XYZ industry. You can expect fresh and engaging content specializing in subjects such as, and then name five things, sub niches within your niche that you tend to write about. For me, functional medicine, epigenetics, healthy lifestyles, biohacking, gut health, to name a few. I've included and then a link to a giveaway hosted on your site, meaning that thing I was talking about earlier. Maybe it's a social media post or um, an email sequence. 
Um, some, something like that that's just, it could even just be a download PDF that would be something that their audience would really love um, with this email, which you can share or use as a content giveaway on your blog. So for me, I used a recipe book. I said, these are my personal favorite recipes I've perfect, perfected over the last seven years and I can sure, assure you that they're absolutely d- delicious and 100% mine. This recipe book doesn't have my name on it anywhere, so feel please feel free to share it and claim it as your own. Um, and so it was an appropriate, you know, giveaway to give to them because I was writing to people in the health and wellness space. It was a paleo recipe book and these really were my recipes. So, um, I put together a little recipe book and nobody actually ended up using it. Um, I think one person used one recipe, so don't worry too much about that. And if somebody does come back and express interest, say, great, let me personalize it for you. So you can change it up a little bit. Swap out the colors maybe um, so that if more than one person asks for it, uh, you know, that's not a problem. But don't worry about that until it actually happens because I sent out hundreds of cold emails and that really wasn't um, an issue. So include a screenshot of whatever it is you decide to give them, but don't actually attach it as a link because too many links within your email have a chan- give you the chance that Google will flag your email as spam. So you don't want to include a lot of links in your cold email. Moving on, so with a background in, name your credentials if you have them. If your former job lines up with your niche, you know, or you're an English teacher, you can spin a lot of your background to kind of lend credibility. Um, I'd be a great fit to create original and engaging content for your target audience. Plus, I write website content, blog, case studies, email newsletters that your client, your audience actually wants to read. You can check out my website to see current and past clients, read testimonials, learn more about my work. And in an effort to save you time and energy, I had mentioned this before, I went ahead and included a couple articles below. Um, And then I write out the names of the articles and make those the links. Those are the only links I like to include that and then, you know, a link up here. Okay. Do you have time for a quick call, call this week to talk about your content marketing? Feel free to schedule a quick call, Calendly link, or email me back. I have some ideas for you and thanks for taking the time to read my email. Looking forward to it. Sarah Turner, freelance medical copywriter. So yeah, really, really keep it simple and um, focus on them and what you can do for them. Really offer a lot of value right away and you will be so surprised. You can really build a strong, robust, reliable client base this way. And as I mentioned, (laughs) be really careful about copying this. Um, because you really do want to make it your own words and personalize it because that's how these things work best for you. I really mean that. I can't tell you the number of students who copied just exactly this and it didn't really work for them because it didn't match kind of their vibe on their website. And, uh, as soon as they wrote it in their own words, they had a lot more success. So I'm really not just saying that I'm trying to save you some heartache there. All right. So I hope that helped. Go ahead. Use cold emailing. Don't be afraid of it. It's not like you have to meet with them in person. It's so much less scary. You get to hide behind your computer. You get to find ideal clients, people, and brands that you really want to work with. It's really amazing. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. Leave me a comment. Let me know, has cold emailing worked for you? What are you going to try from this video that maybe you hadn't thought of before? And of course, let me know what you want to see in the future because I'll be making videos weekly. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks, guys.